Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Give us the thumbs up, share. Anything helps the channel be able to grow and helps me keep making content to come out at you. Today, I just got now, this is only true if you're just watching the video now. I mean, when I'm first releasing it, if you see this three years from now, this is not a new mold. But right now, this is brand spanking new by IOD. This is called the Village Market. And I love this mold, right? Now, as I'm thinking of it, I actually want to write the name on the back. Because once they're open, I forget. And then people ask me what mold you're using. I don't know. Um, so right now, still new. I still remember. Um, but it's got like this beautiful cow and sheep and pig. And I love this. So I already stole it for myself, took it out of inventory before I ever listed them. And what I want to do is I want to create some wall art using these molds. And I'm going to do it two ways. So I have two different frames. I have this frame that I thrifted. So it was six dollars probably less 30 percent so i mean we're talking about four bucks i took the glass panel out it had this wonderful kind of banded matted um banded mat in it and the cardboard backing so i am just going to leave this i took the glass out and what i'm hoping is that i can put my, I can stack my critters, my animals up in here, and then I'll do all the painting afterward. So we're gonna do all three of the animals there. I also have this long frame, which I also thrifted, and I think this one was about three, four dollars. It has, it's not really glass per se, it's, it's like an acrylic. So I am leaving that in because I can paint over that. And I'm gonna put the animals lengthwise. So they're all standing. Now, the cow and the sheep all face one direction, and then the pig faces the other. So I'm gonna have them so that the pig is on the far side, it's facing. And then we're gonna paint this out as well in a different color. But I just wanna give you an idea of like wall art that you can create using some of these. You don't have to stick them on a piece of furniture or just on a sign or something. So we're gonna do both of these up. And if you haven't used it, now the one thing that I will say that's also cool, these are nice big stencils. These make awesome cookie molds as well. So um, I know that I had done a Christmas cookie video oh, a year or so ago and I gave um, the perfect sugar cookie recipe then for the molds because it doesn't spread. So all the details of the molds, all the little fur and, and you know, little eyes and all come out perfectly. They're super cute. So look back if you decide that you want to try um, using the molds for, uh, for making some cookies, check back for that video or um, if I remember, I'll link it. If I forget and you want it, hit me up in the comments and uh, I'll add it in. Now, I am just taking a really soft brush and I am taking some cornstarch to put into the molds. Just, it helps be able to release. These aren't super detailed, so it's probably not as much of an issue, but I just, you know, for the, for the one minute it takes me to do, why not? And so I'm gonna do each of these, I'm gonna make two of each because I've got two different frame projects. And for this, I'm using the Iron Orchid air dry clay. Um, there's a lot of different air dry clays on the market, so I'm perfectly open to your using the one that you prefer. This is the one I carry in the shop and that I've had great success with. It doesn't shrink as much as others, so I just find that I have fewer repairs and fix-its to do afterward. But all that you're gonna do is you're gonna take your clay, I just kind of soften it a little bit because my shop is very cold. So 
I warm it up a little bit. And you're just gonna push it into your mold. Now, the one thing that's nice about the IOD molds, I mean, if you're, you could use um, a resin with this and it does give you how many milliliters of resin that you would need to be able to fill this. So, which is great because then it allows you to just mix up what you need and you're not stuck running around going, oh my God, I've got to, I've got to use up this resin before it, before it uh, hardens up on me. So you know how much to be able to mix up. It also tells you how many grams of the clay it's gonna take to fill your mold as well. So if you're somebody that just wanted to take as much clay as you needed, or you were using a substance that you needed by weight in grams, then you can do it. So you're just gonna fill your mold, push it against the wonderful micro rim of the mold to create a sharp image. When you got your animals molded, flip it over and I just usually take the same soft brush that I used for the cornstarch and I just kind of use it to tease it out a little bit. And especially for these animals, you know, most of the detail is kind of like the thin legs and the thin tails. So I like to do the start at the back at the head and work toward those. And it gives me the opportunity to not crack them or to stretch out the legs so they end up with legs that are twice as long as they should be. <laughs> Just kind of. So the pig's tail is a little bit delicate. Pig's tail, cow's tail, and then any of the legs. Yes, everybody's out safe and sound. Okay, I wanna get these glued on before I take a look at um, any of the little greenery pieces. So. I'm going to start with the, the cow first because it's the biggest. I'm going to stack them on top of each other. So for this, I'm going to take a bunch of wood glue. And this was starting to just kind of gum up a little bit and be a little too thick. So let me just do a slightly bigger hole. Now you could use, you know, any glue of your choice for this. I'm just using a quick drying wood glue. You could use an E6000 if you wanted. Um, a really strong construction adhesive would work. But because these are pictures that are lying flat and we're gonna let this dry, we're not gluing it onto a vertical surface. You don't have to worry about something being so strong that um, that the glue won't slide. I mean, they're gonna be able to um, just kind of dry in place. I'm gonna leave these overnight before I start painting. I mean, you could paint it right away. I just prefer to wait until they've dried enough to be able to take the paint, and then that way too, I don't have to worry about my paintbrush, um, about my paintbrush kind of smearing down any of the details or anything. Now, you can take another brush to be able to smooth this out. I just usually take my finger to just kind of smooth this out to the edges. I just find that if you take the glue right out to the edges, then it will dry flat. You're not gonna have the edges kind of curl up and raise up on you. So I'm just gonna take my cow and I want him Roughly centered and his feet on the ground. And he's super cute. Okay, next comes my sheep. And I'm just gonna glue the sheep with his feet on the cow's back and then the pig with his feet on the sheep's back. Both of my frames are dry. 
So this is what this one looks like. So cute. <laughs> and this is what this one looks like. Okay, so next step is simply to paint them. I'm going to paint this one entirely in vintage, in, sorry, white swan. I was thinking vintage linen in my head. So I'm gonna paint this one entirely in white swan and the long one I'm gonna paint in apothecary. So I am going to give them one coat, one coat for sure, <laughs> likely two coats. I would expect just to be able to even out the tones, but I'm gonna paint the entire thing. So I'm gonna paint the backing, my animals, my frame, all in white. And the other one, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. The whole thing gets painted in the apothecary. So again, we're going for some looks where we're gonna we're gonna add a little bit more over top. So definitely doing two coats on each. And then once those are done and dry, I'll come back at you. Let's play with this guy first. Now, this is the one that we painted the apothecary on and I wanna finish it off here. And we're going to be using um, DIY white wax for this. Because we've got the kind of the rope braiding here, we've got lots of detail in here, the white wax is just really gonna make them pop. I mean, you know, right now it's cute, but it kind of fades into the background. So. I don't have this sealed yet, so no clear wax. I'm just going straight on with the white wax. And what I'm gonna to want to do, and I'm putting my glasses on so I can actually see what I'm doing, is I do want to wiggle my brush to get it down into that rope braiding detail. Because I want this wax, I want the white wax, to sit down into all of the details of that edging so that when I wipe back, it's gonna stay in those lows. And so for this, I don't use a big fat wax brush. I'm just using, um, I'm just using a chip brush because then I can just really work it down in without worrying about ruining a good wax brush. So I would say, I get a lot of people that ask about paint brushes and you know, when you're working with the actual paint and laying things on, um, you know, nothing beats a good brush, right? If you're doing a nice flat surface and you want a nice flat um, finish, then yes, your brush makes a difference, but for something like this, where I'm not just covering a big, um, you know, flat surface of a dresser or an armoire with clear wax, which is when I would use my big flat-bottomed wax brush, I tend to use my chip brushes because I can wreck the bristles. <laughs> and feel guilt-free. I mean, I don't wanna do it with a $50 uh, wax brush, right? Or however much you spend. Now, because I do want this to be sitting down in crevices, I am not worried about having to um, wipe things back as I go. This is a pretty small surface and I'm covering it fairly fast. Um, and I do, expect that it's going to be sitting down into my paint. I'm okay with that. I want it to do that. I want it to sit in some of that detail. Okay, and this is the exciting part coming up now, because this is like, 
the big reveal, but I want it in all of that, the edges around all of my little animals, get in all the grooves around their ears and their, their hooves and their legs and their tails and their udders. <laughs> okay, and then we wipe. So here we're wiping back around that edge and I'm, I'm making a point of leaving it in a lot of those creases, right? I want that white to highlight. Gosh, I love how, how white wax works. It's just, it's just awesome. I mean, look at, look at the edging already. Such a difference, right? Just in terms of detail. So now I'm gonna focus more on the flat surfaces around the animals. Just kind of highlight. I mean, the sheep has got all this woolen detail. The wheat has got all those little grains in there that we're able to highlight. And this is where you know, the detail that the sisters put into their molds, you know, something like this is where it really shines. So you saw what it looked like to begin with, where it was just the flat apothecary green. Check this action out. Look at how cute that is. It's just brought them to life. It kind of highlights them more. They stand out. It gives them that raised kind of 3D effect. So good, so good. Okay, so that's that one. And that one we did with our white wax. Now, the next one, I do have clear wax out. But I wanna do a couple things first. I want to do a little bit of wet distressing on this one. So I do want some of these highs to show um, just before we even do anything. So a little bit of the edging because it's got a lot of detail. And here I'm just taking a wet wipe. You could take a wet paper towel or a wet um, rag and be able to do the same thing. I'm lazy and the water is way over there. <laughs> and I don't want to have to keep getting up. So this works for my purposes too. So all that I'm looking at doing, and you can see on this edge here, is I'm just creating a little bit of sanded detail. Now you could do dry sanding on this too. You don't have to do the wet distressing, but one of the beauties of um, the DIY paint is that it reactivates with water and it makes that, that wet sanding so good. Now you could not do this with a sealed piece, like with an all-in-one, you cannot um, wet distress. You have to dry distress that. But um, with something like the DIY paint, this works great. So I'm gonna carry on with the wet distressing of this and then I'm going to let it dry. I don't wanna try and seal it with the wax um, until it's dried because the water would resist the wax and then it's not going to be sealed properly. So I'm going to carry on with this, let it dry, and then come back at you for the next couple of steps on this one. A little bit more involved than the green one. For this one, now that we've gotten it distressed, so you can see that that really highlighted a lot of the edging more, but it didn't do much to highlight our little farm animals. So what we're going to do Here's the clear. Okay, we're going to clear wax the entire thing first. So I'm just taking my brush and I am just going to clear wax everything. And I'm not gonna wipe it back because I still want some of that wax to be on there um, because we're gonna do some dark wax. So I want to try to have a little 
no paintbrush here. Okay. So I want that clear wax to still be on there. So we're just going to cover the whole thing in our clear wax. And then I'll come back at you for the next step. I have clear wax over the whole piece now. And Oh my goodness, we're talking big rainstorm out there. Okay, so I've got clear wax over the whole piece. And what I want to do is add a little bit more definition. Unlike, you know, with the white wax, the white wax helped settle down into any of the crevices. On this, the clear wax is just clear. You can't really see anything. So two products that you could use to help you with this. You could use darkened decrepit dust, right? I think it's just called decrepit dust or you can use some dark wax. So your choice, whatever works, whatever works for you, whatever you have and you're comfortable with. I, for this, I wouldn't do black wax. It's gonna be a little too stark. But what I do use is a little bit of a brush. And here you can see how little decrepit dust I have. And actually that's way too much even but I use a little short brush and here I'm just going to be applying it over my little animals. I want it down in the little crevices around their legs, just kind of helping silhouette them more than anything else. So, you know, the sheep's got some definition on them. I'm gonna want some in there. And then I can take my clean cloth and kind of wipe it back and because we left a lot of that clear wax on there I didn't wipe it back yet I've got a lot of wax on there to be able to play with and that's one of the reasons I didn't wipe it back before I started this process so it's just gonna help to highlight some of those animals some of those details and what I will do is do this around the animals and then I'll do it also down in along some of the edging so I don't want just the animals to look aged I'm gonna add some to the rest of the piece in some of the other areas so that it all ties in together right so let me let me do a little bit down in these corners and these ones too just making it all cohesive and then I'll let you see so the pig has not been done yet and I think that you can see how the pig just sort of disappears he doesn't stand out the same as these two and that's really what the decrepit dust or the dark wax is going to do for you right is it's just gonna help to be able to highlight some of those elements a little bit more, make them stand out a bit, make them look a little bit aged. And give it a little bit, bit more character, more than anything else. And I'm just gonna add some to the outside of the frame as well maybe a little bit in some of the crevices just to kind of tie it all in together but you can see I'm doing that and I am not all that often dipping into my decrepit dust and I think that's it now you can see I didn't tip out very much and <laughs> I didn't end up using very much of what I did tip out. You don't need a lot of either this, the decrepit dust, or of the dark wax. So don't, um, don't feel that you have to overuse it. A little goes a long way, and it creates that age difference. Right? You can see how much 
that decrepit dust just kind of outlines and ages and gives some definition to the piece, much the same as the white wax really helped the animals in this one pot. And really what I was trying to show you, you know, one, I was dying to use the new molds, but how much you can just use the molds in an old picture frame to create artwork that's super cool, that's very much um, in keeping with whatever color you choose to use with your home decor and with your look. So you can create interesting layouts. It doesn't have to be farm animals. I mean, it can be some of the different scroll works and the shape and just creating a lot of interesting textures that you're able to highlight using any combination of the products in a way that really suits your decor. As always, you can get the clay and the molds and a lot of the items that I used on the website, queenbeecreationshome.com, or someone that's more uh, local to you, any of the IOD distributors. Let me know what you think of this one. As always, I love hearing from you and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.